I am the Space Quest Historian, and welcome to a very special edition of the Space Quest Olympics. If you're new here, let me just briefly recap what this is all about. Every year, on Scott Murphy's birthday, we celebrate his continued existence on this planet by subjecting ourselves to all the nastiest sequences and moments from the Space Quest series, for his, and to a certain extent, our own enjoyment. Scott is, as I'm sure you're aware, one of the co-creators of the Space Quest series, and the idea for the Space Quest Olympics actually started out as a fundraiser to pay for his cancer treatment bills. I'm happy to report that he is now going strong and cancer-free as of this video, but that's not gonna stop us from keeping this glorious parade of voluntary masochism going. Case in point, this marks the fifth year anniversary of the Space Quest Olympics. Yoo-hoo, wee, woo Yes, we started doing these in 2018, and we've been doing these for five years straight now. So, the previous four Olympics were live stream events where a bunch of us got together in a group chat and competed against each other in the various arcade sequences that the Space Quest games are known for, such as the Skimmer sequence from Space Quest 1, Astro Chicken, and Nukem Dukem Robots in Space Quest 3. Burger Time and the Skaterama in Space Quest 4, and for some reason also a few of the arcade sequences in Space Quest 5 that Scott didn't work on, but uh, let's not talk about that. Anyway, we also made up our own events, such as who can escape the Arcada the fastest, who can evade the spider droid the longest, and who can escape Vohal's asteroid the fastest. My favorite was always the Root Monster event from Space Quest 2, and it turned out to also be everyone else's favorite, so it has remained a mainstay of the Space Quest Olympics since its inception. The goal here, of course, is to navigate the unforgivingly unfair pixel-perfect maze of the root monster, get to the bushes at the top of the screen, and then go all the way back without getting caught by the root monster's tentacles. If you do, you have to start over from the beginning. No safe scumming allowed. And not only that, but we do it three times. First on normal speed, which is doable for most people, then on fast speed, which is where things get a little bit tricky, and finally on the game's fastest speed setting, which is usually where people start screaming obscenities. Do it, do it, do it. No! No! That fucking corner every ah, time! so close to Every time! So, as you can imagine, we've had a lot of fun these past four years doing these live streams, but this year, we're doing something a little different. This year, we're not doing a live stream. Instead, allow me to welcome you to the Space Quest Olympics 2023 Feats of Strength Edition. It's basically a showcase cavalcade of people doing weird shit in the Space Quest games, kind of like a, you know, stupid human tricks kind of thing, but anyway, some have done speedruns, some have hacked the games to render them virtually unplayable, some have just decided to see how fast they can get a game over, and some have done some creative shit, let's just say. It's just a way for us to kick back and celebrate the glory of these games in new and special ways. Ways that maybe you haven't seen before. It's our way of saying thank you and a happy birthday to Scott Murphy, without whom we'd probably have to spend our lives doing actually meaningful things like raising our families, curing diseases, or otherwise be productive members of society, and honestly, who needs more of those people? So, without further ado, let's get in and start the Human Dog and Pony Show. First up is Mr. T.L. Wolf, who takes a pacifist approach to large robot combat. Hello, Space Quest fans. Welcome to my section of the Space Quest Olympics. My name is Mr. T.L. Wolf. Today I'll be showing you something, a couple things actually, in Space Quest 3. But I want to start out first by saying a very happy birthday to Scott Murphy, uh, which is the reason that we're all here for the Space Quest Olympics. Um, as someone who this is my favorite game and someone who very much wears his Sierra fandom right here on my sleeve, uh, this is literally has always been my favorite game. But I found out that you actually can beat this without throwing a punch. You just have to be very, very specific in your movement. We're going to start by going straight down and wait till Emmo kind of lines up with us and then we're going to walk with him. And every time he's throwing a punch, he's going to walk with him and then he's going to turn the wrong way and he's going to ruin everything. We're going to try it again. <laughs> it can go wrong. It's probably, you know, it's best to show you that this doesn't always work the way you want it to, but if you can get it just right and kind of keep him in line with you, no, he's not going to behave. All right. Is that the easiest bug to get? And if you can get it, you can break poor Emmo's brain. I think we're in the spot. We're in the spot now. So now we're hiding in the corner. Elmo's going to keep trying to punch us, but he can't quite figure out why he can't reach us. And he's done. And this fight is over. We never threw a punch. In fact, we barely lost energy. We only lost it from walking. So not the easiest bug to get, but at the same time, avoiding this entire minigame sometimes is really useful. 
One other thing I wanted to show before I uh, before I jump out of here and let someone come out. I've noticed that they've fixed something in uh, Fleabit specifically, and that's it used to be you could type uh, bridle, sorry, grinder or Nasher, or I think there were a few names that would work here, and it doesn't work anymore. Are you pretty sure Nasher also doesn't work? But now you can type snake, and it works. I think that's something they changed in Scum VM. This actually used to not work. But yeah, there's all sorts of uh, all sorts of fun things that you can type in, except for that, apparently. Until the snake inevitably eats you. But, like, I distinctly remember snake didn't work. So it's interesting that they have since... <laughs> they have since fixed that. Fixed it? Patched it? I don't know. Anyway, that's that's all I wanted to show you guys was how you can get through... Um, you can get through uh, Nukem Dukem robots without throwing a punch. And then also that apparently snake works now instead of grinder or whatever the other words were. Anyway, again, happy birthday to Scott Murphy, and you guys have a good day. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. And as it turns out, we also have another greeting from Genitarials, who also wants to show us how to beat the Nukem Dukem robot sequence without throwing a single punch. So please try to ignore the fact that I recorded this voiceover separately, and also forgive the repeat of what you're about to watch, but I thought it was a nice birthday greeting for Scott, so I had to throw this in as well. So here we go with Ganadarials and more Nukem Dukem robots. Have at it, sir. Hi, and happy birthday, Scott Murphy. My name is Francois, also known as Gany Dariels. Um, Space Quest is a very dear video game series to me because the first and third installments were the very first games I've ever played. And today, beside my job as a videographer, I teach video game history and I pro produce FMV point and click video games. Um, a few years back, I tried to speedrun Space Quest 3, getting a time of around 16 minutes to finish the whole game. Uh, during this time, I developed a technique to beat Nukem Dukem robots as easy and as reliable as possible. So here it, here is how it goes. Oh, okay, yeah. it's been a... Okay, here you are. You don't even have to punch, actually. <laughs> and that's it. That's how you very easily beat Nukem Nukem Robots. So again, thank you so much for all the fun memories I have of these games. I basically learned English at the age of five just to play these. <laughs> Happy birthday and goodbye. And now, let's have some death. Our friend and adventure game speedrun chronicler extraordinaire One Short Eye has done a death speedrun of all six Space Quest games. Basically, the point here is to start up each of the games in order, then see how fast you can get Roger killed from the start of one game before moving on to the next. So, let's start with the granddaddy of them all, Space Quest 1 from 1986. And there you have it, a very respectable time of 28 seconds on Space Quest 1. Now we'll check back in with Mr. I here to see how he's going to do with Space Quest 2 in a moment. But first, a very heartwarming birthday greeting from Brian Lusk, aka Deadman, and two of his auspiciously named family members. Hello, Mr. Murphy. This is uh, Old Deadman, or Brian is my actual name. Thank you, by the way, for the Space Quest series. It really affected my life to a great degree, to the point where over... Here is my oldest son, Roger, and over here is my youngest son, Scott. In between, there is a son by the name of Mark. So they are actually named after Space Quest and you. So I thought that would be just something fun to say happy birthday to you. 
Uh, do either of you have something you'd like to say? Um, so, first name Roger. <laughs> and he got the idea, of course, from Roger Wilco. Now, my middle name isn't Wilco. It's William because my mom didn't like Wilco. That's but hey, true. it gives me an interesting story. Scott? Well, happy birthday. Thanks for allowing me to exist. Because if I didn't, I'd be like, ah. <laughs> the uh, fun part about the names is that it was a bit of a struggle to get my wife to agree to, to some of these names. You can sit back up, Scott. <laughs> it was a struggle to get her to agree to some of these names. I never could get a Beatrice out of her. Closest I got was a middle name of B on one of my daughters. But uh, I, I thought you'd like to know what you've done and how much you've affected me in my life through Space Quest. Happy birthday. Thank you, Brian, Raj, and Scott. Now, let's check back in with one short eye and see how quickly he can snuff it in Space Quest 2. I think we all know how this is going to go. Yep, straight off the edge of Xenon Orbital Station 4 and right into the unforgiving cosmos, all in the span of 10 precious seconds. Speaking of fast, here's another speedrunning feat for you. Twitch streamer Forte 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 Hoidi took it upon <laughs> Forte 801 took it upon himself to try and beat his personal best time of completing the Pestulon sequence in Space Quest 3. Now that's everything from touching down on the surface of the moon to escaping in the aluminum mallet after defeating Elmo Pug in Nukem Dukem Robots. None of that makes any sense if you haven't played the game, but I'm assuming most of you have at this point. Anyway, his personal best time is one of 13 minutes and 24 seconds. And we join him just shy of the first nine minutes into the run when he's about to enter the hallways of Scumsoft. Now watch out for the amazing invincibility glitch during the Nukem Dukem robots fight. All right, let's watch. Times. And we're going to save here. Because this is Death City. That's my favorite command in the game. Put it. Happy birthday! I just freed one of you. If you could Venmo me like 20 bucks, I'd appreciate it. Buckazoids. <laughs> and we're going to save again here. Because if you mash controls like right here, you enter this weird glitch where you have invincibility and uh the the two guys don't move so let's keep an eye out for that yeah you can see the two guys aren't moving so we got it boom let's get out of here okay so we have like two two and a half more minutes so we should get right near our right near our target of 13 and a half minutes. 
Well, that's a glorious 11 minutes and 21 seconds in total. Now, remember, his original time was 13 minutes and 24 seconds. So, hey, hey, he beat his record. That's that's amazing. Very impressive indeed. But how fast can you get a game over immediately after starting Space Quest 3? That's what I'm wondering. So let's check back in with our friend One Short Eye for that one. Yep, it's a living fountain, and what a glorious one indeed, and only 25 seconds into the game to boot. So that puts the combined death speed run up to just over one minute, and we're already halfway through. Now let's stick with Space Quest 3 for the moment and bear witness to another impressive feat. Here's our good friend Decaf Jedi, proprietor of the first ever Space Quest fan site on the internet and part-time chicken wrangler, showing an impressive no deaths run of Astro Chicken. Take it away, good sir. Ladies and janitors, is how you handle that chicken. One minute is all it takes, and those are words of wisdom you can quote me on the next time someone questions your chickeny prowess. <laughs> Um, anyway, moving on to Space Quest 4, uh, a game that delights in trying to kill you at every single step of the way. Well, let's see how fast One Short Eye can jog his way into the sweet embrace of death on the desolate streets of Xenon. Four seconds in total, and that's including the lovely animation of everyone's favorite cuddly cyborg and his little mechanized pal. So now, I think it's time for a little breather. We've been hitting the throttle pretty hard, so let's wind down with a little bit of fun and enjoy some fine family entertainment. For reasons that shall hopefully remain forever unclear, YouTuber Gokai Orange took it upon himself to recreate the cast of the Space Quest games in, um, um, uh, The Sims? What the f- the- the s- oh, okay, this I gotta see.
that was a head fuck and a half. I think we can all agree. Right, back on the death train, non-stop to the end of the line. Here's one short eye once again, ending Roger's life as prematurely as possible in Space Quest V. Nice indeed. All it takes is a little over a minute of not being a very good academy student, and off you fuck to the glory of an early grave. Right. Well, here's where the Olympics start turning a bit ugly, and gloriously so. Remember the Pain Train livestream we did a while back where we played each of the Space Quest games in, quote, the worst way possible? Well, one thing I've learned from that stream is that one should never definitively say that something is the worst because to the denizens of the Ace Creator Discord, in particular the devious fellows who occupy the Digital Sadism channel, that sounds like a challenge. So here's our friend and Discord moderator PickleDoc showing off a deliciously painful modification he made to the graphics drivers of Space Quest 3. This is Space Quest 3 running in glorious CGA. On an XT no less, so it is slow. Just look at it not go. And this is also a Space Quest 3 and CGA. CGA may be basic, but it does have a few tricks up its sleeve. You can coax 16 color graphics out of it, with limits of course, big ones. I wrote this driver to see if it could be done, and it can. But the game is basically unplayable now, you can't read anything. So of course we're gonna play Astro Chicken in it. Let's go, insert Buckazoid. Takes a little while to find your rhythm when the game is running this jankily. This computer is really struggling. It's not just that the controls are laggy, they're inconsistently laggy. I think I found my groove now. But the real reason we're here is... Happy birthday Scott Murphy, have a good one! Just a few more... And that'll do it, I think. Wait, maybe one more? There we go. And you thought the decoder ring puzzle was hard before. Mm, that's good stuff, but, but wait, did I hear you say you're not in enough pain? <laughs> well, lucky for you, the pain train never stops rolling. Case in point, here's James Howard, the resident pain master of the S Creates Discord, showing off his most notorious creation of all, to date at least, a modified graphics driver that bypasses the game switching into graphics mode, which in turn leaves the games trying to run in text mode. Yeah, you heard that right text mode, as in ASCII characters. Now, you may be thinking, oh, that's not too bad, right? I mean, Space Quest 1, the Sarian Encounter, it's already low res and text-based to begin with, right? Well, I hope you're sitting down for this, because here is Space Quest 1, the ASCII Encounter.
Yeah, good luck with that one. And oh, 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 we're not done yet. No, no, we're just getting started. Now let's ramp things up a bit with a delightful game of Astro. No, sorry, ASCII Chicken. That's good. That's, that's finger licking ASCII right there. Uh, hey, fancy an encore? Yeah, you'll notice we haven't touched upon that most infamous of infamous sequences in the whole Space Quest series yet, the dreaded Skatorama. Well, how about the Skatorama running in 16 colors in text mode? <laughs> Strap yourselves in. the stuff, right. Well, now that we're all properly satiated in the pain train department, let's check in one last time with our friend One Short Eye and his quest to expedite the life expectancy of our janitor hero in Space Quest 6. Take it away. Okay, I'm ready. Energize. You pop a... I'm not going to say he told you so, but he did. Ah, 
on. Now, this one took a little bit longer because, unlike the first five games, Roger, for some reason, isn't in any immediate danger right from the get-go in Space Quest 6, but that didn't stop our intrepid Death Seeker, and just look at that final score. Two minutes and 17 seconds for Space Quest 6, which the eagle-eyed viewer will already have figured out, puts us at a combined total of four minutes and 55 seconds. So that's just under five minutes to bring each of the six Space Quest games to a screeching halt. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. And now we can all breathe a sigh of relief and wish our good friend Scott Murphy the very happiest of happy birthday... Wait, hold on. I feel like I'm forgetting something here. Something... something important. Uh, what could it be? What could it be? Oh, hi there. Well, no, you're right. It wouldn't be the Space Quest Olympics without you, would it? Well, well since none of the other contestants uh, stepped up to this one, maybe, uh, I guess it falls to me then. Yep, right. Fuck. Let's, fine. Let's do it. Wait, what? What? What's that? You you want me to? You want me to? You want me to what? You, really, you, you, oh, you can't be fucking serious, can you? Can't. Up. Oh, oh. Well. All right. Right. Let's fucking do this. Yep. Let's go. Indeed. Nice. We're doing this on normal first, obviously, and then it's on to fast and on to fastest. Let's see if I can one-shot this, even though my eyes are already starting to bleed. Ah, this is the infamous fuck you jun junction. The infamous fuck you junction, which always trips up people because you have to use the diagonal keys for that one. Oh, here we go. He said in a gravelly voice. Oh, yes. Oh, almost nicked it there, but I think we're good. Yep. Up to Le Bush. And back again. No saves coming. Look, Ma. No saves coming. I was going to do a look, Ma, no hands joke, but I feel that would be uh, ill-advised. <laughs> As you can see, we're taking this nice and slow. Uh, but we are not stopping for anything. We break for nobody. Oh, right past fuck you junction and on to the sweet home stretch, which is usually where things fuck up because you have the diagonal keys this bitch. But yep, yeah, there we go. That's normal in one go. Thank you. And now fastest. No. And now fast. All right, this one's gonna be a little trickier. But I have a feeling. Oh! <sighs> got a little over cocky there. Oh, that got a little absent minded there. All right. Your brain sort of has to adjust to the extra speed. Let's see, that's fuck you junction done and dust it. That's the tricky part. Everything else should be pretty good. I am starting to get Venetian blind vision, however, but that is up to Le Bouche and back again. I'm gonna take a couple of halts, like like dead stops under underway because this can get tricky. I feel like my morning brain isn't really up to snuff on this one. I hate to fuck this one up. <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fast. Done. And now fastest. Alright. That's speed fastest. <laughs> the root monster's barely even moving. It's so fast. Uh, it's like it's caught in a temporal vortex or something. Okay, let's have our respawn set and... Yes!
this isn't gonna work, is it? Oh my god. Uh, I think I might have my cycle set a bit too high. <laughs> uh, oh, they're set at a fixed 10,000 cycles. That's stupid. Oh well, here we go, I guess. <laughs> No, no, we don't. No. If we take enough breaks during the fuck, I can't even stop him. Look, I can't. I can't even. I want to position position him just near the entrance there. I can't do it. Oh, there we go. Can I get in there? Nope. Come on, we can do this. All right. Uh, no. Oh. No, this isn't gonna work. No. <laughs> if I, if if I just, no. No. Whoa. Why? Why? I'm that, that, that close. I just gotta get the angle right. That's not a good angle. I need to be maybe there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Can we go up a bit? Nope. <laughs> this is impossible. Look at him just merrily chirping away. Yeah, you enjoy your dinner, buddy. Okay, this this is this is not this is not good. Can I I can't even make it past the first bit, let alone let alone anything else once I get into the actual maze. This this it's not it's not possible. Ten thousand cycles in, in DOS box and this is No, this is not this is not not happening. It's not it's never gonna happen. Once I get into the actual maze, I'm screwed anyway. Let's turn the cycles down to, well, we're at 10,000. Let's uh, turn them down to just under 6,000. That's still pretty damn fast. <laughs> but possibly doable, because here we are. Yeah, and then again. Oh, oof. Oh, where do I go from here? Hold me, I'm scared. Oh, well, not there. This is why we do this in ScumVM during the regular Olympics, the live stream Olympics. Cause, no. <laughs> at, at this point, I'm just, there is no hope. <laughs> I can't, I can't even stop him fast enough. I'm literally like tapping the key like doo -doo, doo -doo, like a fucking Morse code thing and it's still just a fraction of a second too short. Okay. We're at just under 6,000 cycles. Let's turn it down to 3,300 cycles. 3,300 cycles? How's that? That's still pretty damn fast, but maybe this is doable. 3347 on the cycle count. <sighs> How far down do I have to go? Obviously no computer in 1987 would ever run the game this fast, but... Oh! 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 Uh-uh. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't even touching it that time. You'd think this'd be doable, but it's not. Okay, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let's take our time with this. Ah, there we go. <sighs> How am I ever gonna get past Fuck You Junction at this speed? The answer is I'm probably not. Okay, so 
3347 cycles, let's bang it down to just under 2000 cycles. Come on. This has got to be possible, right? I mean, look at that. That's that's fast, but it's not eye-blindingly fast. I can actually stop him in his tracks. I think this is more akin to what fastest is actually supposed to be. And look, kids, we've arrived at Fuck You Junction. Let's see what happens. Predictable things happen. <laughs> but hey, I think this is doable. Uh oh, shit. Okay, that, that's on me. <laughs> well, everything's on me, really, but... Ah, okay, that was... No, <laughs> you didn't see that. Or, or that, or that. <sighs> Can I make it? Yes. Oh. 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 <sighs> Just one more. Oh, that's a bit close. Oh no, oh no, I think I've screwed myself. Can I make, can I just get one little diagonal? No, no I cannot. Sweet space Jesus, what the hell? Oh shit, am I good, am I good, am I good? Yes, yes I am. <gasps> okay, it's fuck your junction time. Uh, uh, I don't think the angle is quite right here, but <sighs> three, two, one, go. The angle was not quite right. Oh. oh, oh, I think we're in a sweet spot here. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, let's not fuck this up. Baby steps, baby steps. I can't make that, can I? Can I? Can I? I can't tell where your fucking feet are. I couldn't make that. Got any more coffee for this? That went cold. All right, with the power of cold coffee, I shall fuck up once again. With the power of cold coffee, I shall be victorious. May have, oh shit. Oh shit, shit, shit. Back up and just a quick diagonal. Just a quick snack and fuck you junction. Fuck you junction has been bested. Oh, the angle is a bit fucky lucky here. <sighs> Quick diagonal. Oh! Oh, we're good! Oh, we're good! <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's not a good angle. Uh. Oh! Good! Oh! Yeah, we're good! Okay. Step. <coughs> Steady on now. That is good. I'm gonna take a running start on this one. Shit. I think I'm one pixel. Oh, I, I can make that. Yeah. 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 Don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. We're almost there. Almost there. Do I do a, di a diagonal or do I just... No, I'm gonna go up like that. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. <laughs> right. Can we make it back? No, I don't think we can. We're gonna give it a shot though. Oh, 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 bad angle. <laughs> Root Monster 2023, bad angle edition. Oh, need a little more lift here. No, uh, I'm gonna hit that tentacle, aren't I? Get over there, get over there, you little fucking bastard. Is this good? I, I don't, the, oh, oh, oh. Can we do it? <sighs> the majesty of Fuck You Junction. It awaits. Do I go a little more to the right or do I attempt a diagonal? 
I might get fucked on the diagonal. Can I get in a better position? Yes! Yes! Shitting Christ! Oh! No! That is it. That is it. That is it. I almost got. I got past Funky Junction. I was almost at the end. That is it. That is it. We're done. Done. Happy birthday. <laughs> Ooh, can I have a go? What? Who, who are you? How, how'd you get in here? Dude, your airlock is like wide open. You might want to have that looked at. Uh, okay. So can I have a go? Um, <laughs> sh sh sure. Knock yourself out. Whee! All right, Scum VM, Space Quest 2, Tentacle Maze, Fastest Speed. I've never even done this on fast before. Let's go. Great. so much for coming to the Space Quest Olympics. I'm the Space Quest Historian. We'll see you next year for more of these shenanigans and probably sometime in between for more shenanigans of other adventure gamey types on this channel. But for right now, once again, happy birthday, Scott Murphy. You're a dear and wonderful friend and we wish you all the best. So thank you for the memories, even the ones that still hurt us to this very day. So cheers and we'll see you around the chrono stream. Bye.